Hi, let's call us. Today's video is all about the axilla. Let's have a definition, okay? So the axilla is a truncated pyramidal space. It looks like a pyramid, but its apex is truncated. And what is the location? So it is located between the upper part of the arm and the chest wall. So this right here is the axilla. It is situated or located between the upper part of the arm and the chest wall. And it is pyramidal in shape. Every pyramid must have an apex and a base. So this right here is called the apex of the axilla. Why this region is called the base of the axilla. So the apex of the axilla is truncated. So it doesn't taper superiorly, but rather it becomes a bit broad. So it is not really abrupt. So this apex is truncated. So it's a truncated pyramidal space between the upper parts of the arm and the chest wall. The apex of the axilla lies in the region. Okay, and that region, you call it the cervical axillary canal. So this is the apex of the axilla. And the apex of the axilla has lots of boundaries. So you can call this the apex of axilla. And it corresponds to the cervical axillary canal. Cervical axillary canal. So structures leaving the cervical region enters the axilla through this space at the apex. That is why it is called the cervical axillary canal. So arteries, nerves, veins are going to be coming down from the cervical region. They're going to pass through this canal of the apex and get into the axilla itself. From the axilla, they will exit and enter the arm. From the arm, the cords and branches from the cords of the brachial plexus are going to give supply the various muscles of the extremities so that is the significance so it is a space every space must allow for the passage of structures this apex is truncated let us look at the boundaries okay so anteriorly is by the clavicle so the anterior boundary of the apex is by the clavicle okay so the posterior boundary is by the superior border of the scapula so this is the scapula right here okay why the media boundary guess what is by the first rib. It's by the first rib. So there is a canal, a space that is bounded anterior by the clavicle, posterior by the scapula, and medially by the first rib. And you call this region right here the cervical slurry canal, the apex of the axilla. So this is the apex of the axilla. So structures are going to pass through this apex and get into the axilla. All right, so that is the significance. So we're now describing the apex of the axilla. The boundaries of the axilla or the walls of the axilla. So the axilla has four walls. It has an anterior wall, a posterior wall, a medial wall, and a lateral wall. So it's like a four-sided room. Anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral. And how do we get that? So, this is the posterior wall of the axilla, seen from behind. This is the medial wall of the axilla, the lateral wall of the axilla, and this right here is the base of the axilla. The muscles forming the anterior wall of the axilla include this muscle in front called the pectoralis major. Pectoralis major. Okay. This muscle above and behind the pectoralis major is called the subclavius. Why this muscle deep to the pectoralis major is called the pectoralis minor. Okay, so the posterior wall of the axilla is formed by three muscles. And the muscles of the posterior wall include this muscle right here. It's called the subscapularis. It's a muscle with multi-pendent fibers. Subscapularis. Okay. This intermediate muscle here is the teres major. Teres major. Why this muscle right here is the latissimus dorsi. It is important to note that the teres major and the latissimus dorsi, okay, twists around themselves and they form what is called the posterior axillary fold. So if you look at the base of the axilla, the base of the axilla is curved. So this curve right here, or this concavity, okay, 
made the axilla at its base to have two folds. So the folds along the posterior axillary line, this fold right here, is called a posterior axillary fold. So the posterior axillary fold is formed by the teres major twisting around the latissimus dorsimus. Okay? Why anteriorly we have another fold? This fold right here is called the anterior axillary fold. And the anterior axillary line is drawn down from this fold. Okay? So this fold is the anterior axillary fold. The anterior axillary fold. And the anterior axillary fold is formed by the pectoralis major muscle. So the pectoralis major muscle only forms the anterior axillary fold. While the posterior axillary fold is formed by the teres major twisting around the latissimus dorsi. You right, they say the glistening tendon of the latissimus dorsi. All right. So we have looked at the anterior wall and the posterior walls of the axilla. The lateral wall of the axilla, this one right here, is formed mainly by the humeral region, by the humerus. So the humerus are the region of the surgical neck. Humerus are the region of the surgical neck. Okay, so the tendon of biceps brachii, biceps brachii muscle. And the coracle brachialis. So they form the lateral boundary, a lateral wall of the axilla. How about the medial wall? So the medial wall is going to be formed by this region close to the chest wall, by the side of the chest wall. So the medial boundary is going to be formed by the upper four ribs and their intercostal spaces. By the upper four ribs and their intercostal spaces, and the serratus anterior muscle. Serratus anterior. So the medial wall of the axilla is formed by the upper four ribs and their intercostal spaces, together with the serratus anterior. Some of the digitations of the serratus anterior form the medial wall of the axilla. Okay, so we've been able to x ray the medial wall, the lateral wall. How about the base of the axilla? So the base of the axilla, it is concave. And what makes it concave? It is because this fascia right here, that's, this is the clavicle. There's a fascia that descends from the clavicle. So it extends below the clavicle and splits into two layers and encloses the subclavius. Further unites and continues downward and splits again to enclose the pectoralis minor. That fascia is called the clavipectoral fascia. So this fascia right here, is the clavi pectoral fascia. So the clavi pectoral fascia, after enclosing the pectoralis minor, continues as a downward extension. So this downward extension of the clavi pectoral fascia, right, here, is what is called the suspensory ligament of the axilla. So this is the suspensory ligament, ligament of the axilla. And what's the significance of the suspension ligament of the axilla? This ligament pulls the base of the axilla upwards. So the base of the axilla is not flat, but it is concave. And the concavity of the base of the axilla okay, is simply a more structural modification with respect to the orientation of the chest wall and the upper arm. And that is what, why the base is actually concave. So what is responsible for the concavity of the base of the axilla? The greatest factor in play here is the pulling effect of the suspensory ligament. And the suspensory ligament is a modification or a downward extension of the clavipectoral fascia. So very high you to know, okay? So up next, we'll look at the contents of the axilla. So it is a space. Structures must be passing through it. Structures that are leaving the root, the neck region to enter the arm are going to pass through the axilla, majority of them. So let us look at them. So the contents of the axilla. A simple way of remembering anything content is remember the structures we are dealing with in anatomy. So arteries, veins, lymphatics are going to be passing through here. Okay? So the first is this artery. This artery is the axillary artery. So the axillary artery and its branches. Axillary artery and its branches. What are the branches of the axillary artery? 
the superior thoracic artery or first part, acromial thoracic artery, lateral thoracic artery, posterior circumflex femoral, anterior circumflex femoral, and subscapula. All right. So we also have the axillary vein and its tributaries. Axillary vein and its tributaries. Arteries give rise to branches. Veins receive tributaries. There is this nerve that corresponds to the lateral cutaneous branch of the second intercostal nerve. Guess what it's called? The intercostal brachial nerve. So the intercostal brachial nerve is here. It passes through the axilla. So the content of the axilla. And it's going to supply the skin over the axillary region. And sometimes that area is overlapped by the medial cutaneous nerve of arm. And number four, we have the five axillary group of nerve nodes. So the five axillary groups of lymph nodes. And the five axillary groups of lymph nodes can be remembered with a mnemonic. And that mnemonic is a clap. So let's give a clap for the axilla. So this A here means the apical group. This C means the central group of axillary lymph nodes. This L is the lateral group, otherwise called the femoral group. And usually, the lymph node in the lateral group that receives the first drainage, okay, of the cancerous cells is what is called the sentinel lymph node, the sentinel lymph node. So this one here is the anterior group of axillary lymph node. This one is the posterior group of axillary lymph node. Okay. Now, so many structures are passing through the axilla. So there is no need for friction within this region because these structures are very delicate. So for that reason, the axilla is filled with fats. So it's a fat-filled space. So I'm going to have what is called the axillary fat part. So the axillary fat part. All right. How about your brachial plexus? Remember the part of the brachial plexus that lies below the clavicle. It's called the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. So the sixth content right here is the infraclavicular part of the brachial plexus. Okay, so the next content is loose layer of connective tissue. And it's called the areolar connective tissue. So loose or areolar connective tissue. Okay, let's call us notable highlights you must note about the clinical correlates with respect to the axilla include measurements of axillary temperature, okay? Checking of axillary temperature, boys in the axillary region, axillary lymphadenopathy, okay? Axillary artery thrombosis, spontaneous thrombosis of the axillary vein, and deep injury within the axilla can injure the intercostal brachial nerve, okay? As well as the long thoracic nerve. So another very much important content is the long thoracic nerve. So surgical procedures in the axillary region should be done carefully to avoid damage or injury to the long thoracic nerve. It never forgives. It causes wing gain of the scapula. Thank you very much. See you next time.